Hello everyone, back to you in today's second video. Go to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's second video. So day 10 will take us to the 21st of December and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with extended GFS and ECM ensembles. Uh, they run around a couple of weeks. Go have a look at the CFS V2 for January at the end of the video. JMA Friday has been released, so that is the month head look over the Japanese and CFS uh, V2 uh, models and I think quite a mild signal uh, for the next four weeks with JMA Friday uh, this week. Have a look at video and see what's going on. We are going to be back later on uh, with the ECMWF 42-day uh, look-ahead. That'll be around 5, 6 o'clock this evening. And we're going to have the 18th Christmas update for you uh, around 8 o'clock tonight, uh, followed by a live stream after 10 o'clock. So I shall see you live after 10. But let's do the 10 to 14 day uh, uh, first. Now, I just want to start with this. So, uh, this was the CFS V2 uh, forecast for the uh, 3.4 ENSO region, sex by the extra Pacific, really, um, back in, in the early part of November. So, uh, we cover this, of course, in winter uh, updates uh, extensively. So, uh, back in uh, November, early November, late October, early November, CLS V2 was forecasting a super La Nina. Uh, so, our temperature norm is on the side, uh, dates in monthly periods on the bottom. So, uh, around sort of now uh, to early January, CFS V2 was predicting that the Enso region, central part of the Enso region, anyway, was going to go down to somewhere between uh, 2 and 2 and a half degrees below average. That would be like a very strong to super landing uh, uh, event. And it always looked over time. It always looked overdone. So I was never really convinced that, that we would get uh, a super landing year through the winter of 2021. And I said, you know, I thought that in the end we would see this pulling up, you know, instead of uh, instead of Black Dash, I was used on solar mean sort of crashing down to around two, two and a half degrees below average. I said we'd see it pulling up and uh, and probably finishing up somewhere around uh, one to one and a half degrees uh, below average. Well, this is how the latest CFS V2 forecast is looking, and it has indeed pulled up that black dash line. So uh, now it's uh, forecasting that we just keep like sea surface temperature on it's around one to one and a half degrees below average through to the end of this winter before we uh, return back to ENSO neutral uh, in the spring. So instead of doing that, uh, that sort of crash. Um, down to around two, two and a half degrees below average and doing something like that. We now just see the black dash on the ensemble mean just uh, sort of flat lining away there between around one and one and a half degrees below average. So we like weak to borderline moderate, really, uh, with this landing. I don't think the landing is going to have too much impact uh, on this winter in, in Northern Europe, really, at that sort of level. So if we do come away with a mild or a very mild winter, I don't think we'll be able to pin that down, you know, uh, blame it on the La Nina, uh, really. Uh, uh, when you get to the sort of moderate to strong La Nina levels, then that can have an impact. But the, in the level that it's at at, at the moment, I, I, would, I wouldn't think that it's going to have too much impact either way on this winter. So if we do finish up quite cold this winter, then we won't really be able to say that's down to the La Nina. But if we finish up mild, uh, we won't be able to blame that on the La Nina either. So uh, anyway, that's it. CFSB2 has definitely backed away from that Super Nino forecast. It's pulled, pulled up uh, the Black Dash line, as I said it would. And so I think that's a pretty decent forecast from uh, Gaz Webb. It's actually was never convinced about the CFS V2 going for that Super Nino. It always looked over top and overdone. And uh, there we go. And so it has proven. Still a good forecast overall from the CFS boat because it had this landing you pinned down as early as around January. It's a fantastic forecast from uh, CFS V2 with this landing year. But in, in the end, you know, late on, it did go over the, over the top with it and, and it went too strong. So so that looks much more likely a, a weak to borderline moderate landing year event. Right, so uh, let's do some forecasts then. Uh, just going to have a very quick look. And if you enjoy all that sort of stuff, by the way, Gaz of his study roundup will be returning in the new year. So uh, from uh, early January, first study of January, we'll uh, bring back Gaz of his study round roundup. And we talk much more about ENSO and all of that sort of stuff in the Sunday roundups. Right, OK, let's have a look at the GFS of rare temperature and precipitation ensembles then for the next couple of weeks. So red light is 30 other air temperature average on a commentary. 
again today. So we're starting off close to average at the moment. We're going to see the upper air temperatures lowering and then lifting up again as we go through to the early part of next week. Quite mild. Moving into the second half of December, generally just a little bit on the milder than average side. And as we get towards Christmas... Uh, which is right at the very end of the ensemble graph uh, still, of course. As we get towards Christmas, a lot of scatter. We've got milder ensemble members just here. We have still got our cold outlier ensemble members down there. So, <laughs> so yeah, you know, uh, as we get towards Christmas, we do still have a range of possibilities on the table from uh, anything from, like, being really mild to actually turning uh, quite cold. And one or two of those ensemble members are really going down to very cold levels, but, of course, they are outliers. And uh, and so I think we do still see a little bit of a cooling trend around the Christmas period. You can see that the white line here, which is the ensemble meme, that is dropping uh, a little bit. So, so, yeah, it looks like we've still got some colder... Uh, trains up towards Christmas. But again, there is so much scatter there, really, but it is difficult to, to say what happens as we get towards Christmas. But maybe turning cooler, but but these ensemble mares down here, which do turn cold, they, they uh, you know, are, aren't um, well supported by the ensembles. Precipitation-wise, looks quite unsettled. I mean, it's not a deluge. It's not, not exceptionally wet. It's not like we had it last year, but there is plenty of precipitation from start to finish. So there will be regular spells of rain. Temp <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> It's going to be temperature anomalies from the 11th to the 19th December. It's going to be milder than average, not just the UK and Ireland, but through most parts of Europe. We are entering into a mild or a very mild spell of weather uh, in the week ahead. Precipitation anomalies from the 11th to the 19th of December are going to be average to wetter than average. This is the latest wind flow map from EarthNollSchool.net showing that westerlies are breaking through. The westerlies are pushing through uh, as low pressure takes over from off the Atlantic. And so this is how the UK Met is looking for Monday with low pressure bearing down on the country, bringing wet and windy weather in from off the Atlantic. And we're going to keep these unsettled conditions going through uh, to Thursday, which is as far as we go with the uh, UK Met Thursday, 17th of December. The wind remains from the west, and so we remain unsettled, wet and windy. This is how the GFS 6Z is looking. So again, on Monday, wet and windy weather piling in from off the Atlantic. Plenty of rain uh, coming through there. We keep the unsettled weather going through to the middle of next week and on into the second half of next week. Yes, uh, low pressure continues to push in. The jet stream is moving a little bit further southwards as we're heading up towards Christmas. This is Sunday, 20th of December. The jet stream is trying to push southwards and there is some colder air trying to move in from the north on the northern side of these areas of low pressure. And so, as we push, uh, push this next low through, which does become a very vigorous feature, by the way, on the 22nd of December, brings proper wet and windy weather, even gale force winds uh, across the country. As that one pushes through, we do actually manage to turn the wind into the north. So we get a little cold snap there just before Chris. It's 300 hours away, so I mean... It's virtually uh, unlikely to, to verify. But there is a little bit of a cold snap there just before Christmas. On the eve of Christmas, 23rd of December, we turn wind back into the north. And that will bring some wintry showers into northern parts of the country, the colder feel. Then a little ridge of high pressure builds across the country for Christmas Eve. Probably gives us a dry but quite chilly Christmas Eve, maybe with some frost and fog early and late. And then we're back into those westerlies, though, as we go into Christmas Day. So it turns milder, wetter and windier on Christmas Day. And that's how we finish up with this uh, with this GFS run, which today gets us to the 27th of December. Next low pressure coming in off the Atlantic, bringing the next batch of rain in from the west. This is how the uh, GM is looking. So again, wet and windy with the GM as we go through to the early part of next week. And generally just keeps areas of low pressure coming. So uh, yeah, spells of rain heading in off the Atlantic. And generally a relatively mild feel. Although, again, similar to the GFS 6 there, by sort of day 10, 21st of December, we are beginning to move the jet stream uh, southwards a little bit. So we're probably back onto the cold side of the jet by uh, day 10, which will lower the temperature and probably see some of the showers turning wintry 
up in the north. Uh, ECM looks like that. So, again, more wet and windy weather to come on uh, Monday and into the early part of next week. Further bouts of rain heading in from off the Atlantic. No real uh, change up to day 10. And unlike the other two, which send, which do send the jet stream southwards by day 10, the, uh, the ECM uh, on Monday 21st of December still has the jet stream running through the country. We're still bringing up really quite mild air from uh, the southwest up to day 10. Uh, as well uh, with the uh, with the ECM, so so the other two want to move the jet stream southwards by day ten. Turns a little bit cooler. The ECM uh, looks very mild. Uh, this is the precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tomecho.com. Just run through this very quickly. There'll be bouts of rain coming and uh, going, so not continuously wet. So not going to be like last December when it just didn't stop raining. There will be like uh, two day breaks where it turns drier. And then the next batch of rain comes in. And then we get a couple of days off. And then the next batch of rain comes in. So it's not quite as bad as we had. <laughs> not quite as bad as we had last December and last week. But nevertheless, it will be unsettled. And there'll be regular sort of spells of rain coming and going. And uh, and generally a mildish sort of feel. Until around days 8, 9, 10 anyway. When we should start. Or we could start to bring some cooler air in from off the Atlantic. There's another batch of rain heading in there on day 10, which is the 21st of December. These are the options on the table in the ECL ensembles today for day 10, which gets us to the 21st of December. We have 28 members of the ECM ensembles with blocking to the north and also high pressure to the east, but low pressure is out to the west, and so we're bringing up a mild southwesterly wind. 28 doing that. That does include the control and the operational run. The operational ECM run is the one we've just been looking at, of course. And we have 23 members of the ECM ensembles that have the low pressure, just a little bit centered over top of the country. Can Combined with higher pressure to the north. I mean, still unsettled. It could be a little bit cooler. The jet is probably a bit further southwards uh, with that one. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. This gets us to Boxing Day, 26th of uh, December. We have 28 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure towards Greenland and Iceland. Low pressure is over top of the country. Very close to starting to turn things colder uh, with that one. And then, uh, all those options. And then 23 with low pressure to our southwest, high pressure to the northeast. And probably bringing up some sort of a mild southerly to southwest wind. Rather inconclusive there. But overall, probably still looking quite mild and unsettled, I suppose, for Christmas. Right, let's just have a very quick look at CFSV2 then uh, before, we, before we wrap this one up. So here we go. This is the 700 millibar height anomaly uh, for January from the CFS uh, V2. And it's looking unsettled in January of uh, below. Average heights, low pressure out to our west and income these uh, west southwest is there is quite a high amount of northern blocking have got all these red colors within the northern latitudes and it is also hinted a bit of a scandinavian high as well um but as it is you know uh, we're bringing west southwest east, despite all the northern blocking and the scandinavian high despite all of that we still keep wind in from west southwest so it remains mild temperature anomalies uh for january are forecast to be very significantly milder than average and precipitation anomalies are uh, seem to be wetter than average. A mild and wet opening to 2021. CFSV2 is correct, despite, again, still having appreciable levels of northern blocking. If you've enjoyed this video, please click like. Make sure you subscribe to our channel to see future weather content. Uh, tell your friends about Gals Webbies as well, and they'll be able to see future weather for content too if they subscribe. And uh, let us know in the comments what you think about this video and all of the videos. That would be absolutely great if you can do that. I can imagine what the comments are going to be like after this video. Uh, be entertaining, I suspect. Right, we'll be back after 6 o'clock, or around 5, 6 o'clock, with the ECM today, 42-day look here. Then from 8 o'clock, uh, we're going to have our 18th Christmas update. We'll be live streaming after 10, and I shall see you then. For this one, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.